we will now look at an example involving Newton's law of cooling. Newton's law of cooling states that the rate of change of the temperature of an object is proportional to the difference between the object's temperature and the temperature of its surroundings. So let's take these words and turn them into a differential equation. We're gonna start with the rate of change of the temperature of an object. And that rate of change will be given by the derivative of T, where T represents the temperature of our object. Now that rate of change is proportional to, so that means that it's gonna be a constant times, and then the difference between the object's temperature and the temperature of its surroundings, well, that is T, the object's temperature, minus the temperature of the surroundings. And so this gives us Newton's law of cooling, which can be applied in a variety of contexts. I wanna say something about the constant K. Let's take the, the derivative of T. It's proportional to the difference between the temperature of the object and the temperature of the surroundings. So if the object has a greater temperature than its surroundings, then that difference will be positive. But if an object has a greater temperature than its surroundings, say like a cup of coffee that's very hot, in a room that's relatively cool, we expect that cup of coffee to cool off. And so we expect that rate of change to be negative. But the difference between the temperature of the cup of coffee and the surrounding temperature is positive. So that gives me a hint that K should be negative. Also, imagine that we have something that's very cold, like a cold drink, a cold Coca-Cola, and we leave that cold Coca-Cola out in a relatively warm room, then the temperature of the Coca-Cola minus the surrounding temperature will be negative, but we expect that the temperature of the Coca-Cola will increase to the surrounding temperature of the room and so we expect the rate of change to be positive, which means that again, K will need to be negative so that we get a positive rate of change there. So we will expect that K in this case will be a negative constant. Now we would like to uh, solve this differential equation. So if we wanna solve this differential equation, it should the solution should look like T of little t should be, well, it should be a constant times e to the kt because this uh, differential equation has a k times t term in it. And then plus the equilibrium solution, and the equilibrium solution in this case is the surrounding temperature because the derivative of this uh, of the temperature is zero when the temperature equals the surrounding temperature. And then if we want to plug in the initial condition, then uh, T of zero in this case is going to be C e to the zero plus the surrounding temperature. T of zero though, is going to be, we're gonna call that T sub zero. And so that tells us that the constant in this case is going to be T zero minus the surrounding temperature. And so the solution to our equation, T of T, is going to be the initial temperature minus the surrounding temperature, e to the kt plus the surrounding temperature. Now k in this case is negative, 
So as t goes to infinity, we expect that this term will go to zero as t goes to infinity. And so the temperature of the object will approach the surrounding temperature. So that gives us a little bit of physical verification that the solution to our differential equation is correct and that our model is correct because we expect our object to approach the surrounding temperature as time goes to infinity. So let's use this uh, Newton's law of cooling in a more practical context. Okay, so we're gonna play a little bit of CSI here. We're gonna have a crime scene investigator who discovers a dead body at midnight at the time the body is found, the temperature of the body is 88 degrees. And an hour later, the temperature of the body is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature of the room was held to a fixed temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna use Newton's law of cooling to find the time of death. So first, we just wanna write down the differential equation that describes this context. Here we have that the derivative of temperature is proportional to the current temperature minus the surrounding temperature, in this case, 72 degrees. And the initial uh, temperature is 88 degrees at midnight. So here we're going to say that midnight is going to be T equals zero. Now we want to solve this differential equation. So using that form of the solution that we had before, we see that T of T, okay, our temperature at time T is equal to the initial temperature 88 minus the surrounding temperature 72 times E to the KT. We still don't know what K is yet. We'll have to figure that out. Plus the surrounding temperature 72. If we simplify that a little bit, we're gonna get 16 e to the k times t plus 72. Now, to determine k, we're gonna use the fact that an hour later, the temperature of the body was 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So here we have that t of one is equal to 16 e to the k plus 72 and what we can do is we can set that equal to 86 degrees. That's the temperature of the body an hour later. So this tells me that 16 e to the k is actually equal to, if I subtract 72, 14. So e to the k is actually equal to 14 over 16. So I wanna solve for k. So K must equal the natural log of 14 over 16. So K is equal to negative 0 0.1335 if I want to use a decimal approximation. So note that K is negative as we suspected previously. Once I have K, I want to use the fact that a body is normally 98.6 degrees to find the time of death. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the solution to our differential equation, T of T, which was 16 E to the KT. I'm going to leave it in terms of K because it's going to be a little bit easier to do the solution. And I'm going to set it equal to 98.6. And then I'm going to solve for T. And if I do that, that will help me find the time at which the temperature of this body that we found was 98.6 degrees. And we're going to assume that that was the temperature of the body when it was living. So here we have 16 E to the KT must equal, subtracting 72, it must equal 26.6. So E to the KT must be 26.6 over 16. And so that tells me that K times T 
must be the natural log of 26.6 over 16. So that tells me that T in particular must be the natural log of 26.6 over 16. And then I'm gonna divide that by K. Now I haven't plugged in anything in terms of a decimal approximation for say 26.6 divided by 16 or the natural log of that yet. I think it's actually better to plug in all of these numbers at the end so I can get an accurate estimate of the time. If I do plug in all of these numbers, I'm gonna get negative 3.81 hours. First of all, let's note that the time that we found is negative. This makes sense because we found the body at midnight, which we said was time t equals zero, and we expected that the person expired before midnight, okay? And so it's almost four hours before midnight, so it's going to be a little bit after 8 p.m. Uh, that we suspect that uh, this person expired, so we're gonna put the time of death at 3.81 hours before midnight. And that hopefully is an important part of the uh, information that they will use to determine um, how this person expired.